exciting game, for sure. Yeah, and there's also some advantage for uh, Six, I believe, because we've seen some decks from Ties being streamed in the previous match, right. Kamlin, and now Six, Six, Six was able to conceal most of his decks. Uh, he was playing versus Penny before, but I don't know how much information Ties got from that. Yeah, and we were sat backstage in the player room watching that last series, uh, five or six of us, including Six O. so he definitely scouted out Tice's decks and uh, put himself in a good position. But I, I just want to add to like Lothar's description of Six O there. I don't think he gets enough credit for how many tournaments he's actually won. You know, in terms of like the Twitch Invitational thing, that you know, 16-man online tournaments that you know, happen every other weekend or so, it, he's kind of the king of that format. He's won three or four of them that that I remember. So he's he's a really strong player at you know fighting through. Uh, condensed brackets of high quality talent, uh, the kind of situation that we're in right now with this, this top 16. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about the matchups. Like, uh, we see the decks of uh, both players. We don't know exactly what archetypes they're playing. We know Ty's. We, we know that we've seen the zoo with. Uh, we, I think we haven't seen uh, Sijan's the demon zoo. Yeah, he's playing the big zoo, the Void Caller Malganis version. Yeah. yeah. And we've seen the Druid being the standard mid range. He's playing Paladin, so I'll have to assume this is probably the secret Paladin there. Uh, from 6 0, Warlock, Warrior, and Paladin. Yeah, um, knowing 6-0, Warrior, almost certainly Patron. Knowing 6-0, Warlock, almost certainly Zoo. <laughs> Paladin, you know, most commonly tends to be a secret Paladin, but again, 6-0, big fan of combo decks, so there's always the chance that the, the little Murloc twist is in there. But yeah, I would expect um, lots of, lots of mid-rangey stuff going on in general throughout this, uh, throughout this series. So it's going to be a battle held on the board, who can curve out, who can get ahead first and really snowball advantage. Absolutely. If this is um, a secret Paladin from 6 0, yeah. does it mean that this match, th th this is really good to line up against the Druid? Uh, if, it's, if it is a secret Paladin, I think like the, the edge of 6 0 having the Patron Warrior in this, uh, like, in this matchup is definitely in his favor because. Never mind. Well, let me stop right there because <laughs> it is an anything Paladin. But uh, what I was going to say is just generally, I feel like Tice's lineup is pretty weak to Patron Warrior overall. Yeah. Uh, with Zoo, Secret Paladin, and uh, 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 Midrange Druid, so it's uh, it's it's a pretty risky lineup to have overall, I think. We don't know if uh, Tice is playing Secret Paladin yet, I believe. Uh, no, we saw he was play he played Secret Paladin in the last. Series. Oh, he was playing because he had the mini bomb, right, Blessing right. of Kings, etc. Yeah. So we've seen all the decks from Tice. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, so uh, Murloc Paladin versus Zoo. Lothar, do you know how that matchup goes? Is it okay? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of clears for the Paladin, right? The Tumseyes, um, Pyromancers, there are equalities, consecrations. So unless um, unless Tyus will pick up a strong array of minions with Death Rattles, yep. it might not be looking great for him. So having those minions that was not just sticky enough to go through and chip off the health of Paladin will be very important because the Paladin will not finish him off before 10-10. That's for sure. Right. Because there's, the deck is not designed to just be aggressive. Even if you play the World Leaders, even if you play the Murlocs in the beginning, you use them for trading, yep. not for establishing board control. So um, Tice will be the aggressor. That's for sure. So is there like a standard list of Murloc Paladin at the very moment? Uh, or do people still argue about what to play do you play Dr. Boom in the list? Uh, do you not play? How many Humilities do you play? It's it's starting to get closer to Refined. It used to be miles apart, and there were things like Unstable Ghoul being tried. Some people were still like going for the good card, good Paladin cards version with Minibot and Muster for Battle, but it's refined to the point where pretty much everyone agrees on Doomsayer as the two-drop. Um, there used to be like the Cult Master versus Solemn Vigil argument. That's pretty much settled. It's come down to Solemn Vigil pretty much all the time now. What but about yeah, Muster? The, play yeah, play? Muster's pretty much on its way out. The flexible cards now are the cards you talked about. It's Humility versus Dr. Boom versus potentially a Loot Hoarder. These are kind of the, the, the additional flex cards that people are still trying to flesh out the list with. And to be said, like, Cards like Peacekeeper yes. or humili Humility right. are not really effective against Zoo because there are so many buffs like the Defender of Argus, the Muse of Surgeons, um, and then what else do we have? The PO. Right. You still have a minion that can be targeted for this, right? Yeah. So having the minion is even more important for a Zoo player than having a bigger minion. Right, I mean, like, for a reason, Zoo plays so many cards that generate 1-1s one for them. Haunted Creeper, Imp Gang Boss, Implosion, etc. So they don't care how small their minions are but a lot of the time, as long as they have stuff on the board to compound on further turns. Yeah, so from the Zoo perspective right now, uh, for what Tice will try to do to have uh, a small board, not overextended to AoEs that will happen at some point, and just uh, slowly chip away health and uh, always con contest 6-0 and ask him, hey, do you have something to 
do with my board. Right, and you can see right away the the, the choice of twists that Sixo has in his personal build here. He has the Acidic Swamp Ooze, which isn't always in the humility that's part of the argument as to whether you play, and also a Lotheb, which is a little bit unusual in this deck as well. Oh, yeah, that's a good, um, yeah. good, good spot. All right, so for Thais, uh he can deal with this 3-3 free, free easily with the minions on board, but is there something better he can do? Defender of Argus, um, and then you have a 2-5 that can start doing some damage. Is Does he want to play Void Caller this turn? I think the Void Caller is reasonable. You end the turn in a pretty nice position with a 3-4 a with a nice Death Rattle inside it and a, a couple of small minions on the board with the, the M-Gang boss and the generated token. So I think this is fine. If, if True Silver comes out, you're okay with it, which is one of your big concerns against this deck, making sure you have a consolidated position against uh, True Silver. So he's insured against most of the powerful, powerful things that Paladin can do on turn four, being primarily Consecration and True Silver Champion. And that also that that fight that even if you play around Consecration and Paramance in this uh, in this particular scenario, your opponent would likely most likely will have to keep the Paramance and the Consecration for the same turn since you can play around some death rattles sure. in this situation because they will be queued, you know, like the death rattles will be queued between the Consecration and the one damage from uh, from the Pyromancy. Right, excellent against Haunted Creeper in particular, for example. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So interesting turn for six. So nothing really stands out as being great. Is uh, Coin Lotha a possibility to just bring more power on the board? I don't think you can spare the coin when you have so much synergy uh, with the Pyromancer in this deck, and also you can use the coin for a turn nine. Anything can happen. Yeah. Hmm. This is a really interesting scenario because <laughs> I would say probably you don't want to overextend. The implosion looks good, but you can't play it before you see right. the board clues. But at the same time, there, there, are, there are so many board clues in this deck. You can't really do anything about that. Yeah. At some point, you will be squashed. Right. Defender of Argus looks good. Yeah, Defender of Argus is definitely appealing, and there is this kind of cat and mouse game that Zoo plays against AoE with Implosion, where they try and bait out the Implosion, the AoE first, and then use Implosion to refill afterwards. But as you said, Lothar, it's not an unusual situation where you'd be like, okay, nice. I baited, it, I baited out his AoE, Implosion comes down, then all of a sudden just, you know, Pyro plus a spell, and then that's ripped yeah. your board again. So as you said, there's so many uh, clearing options. You can already see in Sixo's hand, he has a quality Consecration, Pyromancer plus cheap spells. Like he has so many ways of reacting to big boards. But at 27 life, here's the thing. He doesn't have to commit to any of those just yet. He can actually just continue to allow Tice to develop his board, use his health total as a resource, and get more eventual value out of his board. And with Lothab, even, he is forcing the minions to come out, yes. like blocking the spells. It's like, hey, do you, do you just tap and pass this turn, or do you right. really play something? Also, Lothab itself is a threat in a way that... Um, Tyson would probably not trade into it, but then Sixer will have a possibility to trade into Tyson's minions. Yeah, I mean, when, and when you put it like that, Nimj, like Lotheb is a card that kind of makes some sense in this deck, right? Because you can, like, in exactly this sort of situation, just commit your opponent to playing more minions to the board because you lock out spells and then bait them into a bigger clear with your equality. So I would say you just go for the PO. Just six mana yeah. PO trade and go for yes. yeah. You still have nine, uh, sorry, seven damage on board. Seven damage is okay. Sure. It's, a, it's a spot which is kind of enough right. to threaten the Paladin to clear the board, but it's still not overextending. Yeah, it makes sense. It's still enough to put him on a reasonable clock, right, if you're just beating away at seven a turn. You know that the Paladin has to react to that still. They can't just keep taking seven a turn. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me, but... I mean, this is a pretty similar play, honestly. He's getting some value out of his minions with the trade anyway, so only really the extra flame imp getting committed as opposed to the power overwhelming. So it's not a big difference, but we'll see if this is enough now to convince Sixo to use his first ball clear, and it might well be, because the damage has is ramping up very quickly here. Yeah, it has to be the clear. I don't see any reason why would you hold on to it. Right. Like Maybe there is a, a, another way, like, if you just go for Murlocs this turn, attack into the 3-4. If you get Morganis, you are in trouble. <laughs> but the, not only... Uh, yeah, I mean, not because, like, you have humility, but... The, right, but the other... Demons, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pyromancer Consecration can clear most of this board and just not uh, pop the Void Caller, so that's probably the play, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It does use up both of his equality activators in hand, so he's now kind of stuck with a stranded equality, but uh, he does have the Blue Girl Warrior yeah, that he can use to, to proc it immediately, but now Knife Juggler comes into play, and uh, yeah, I didn't this, like is, this is looking pretty dangerous. 
I didn't like that clear at all. Oh, I would have just used the equality along with something and just face down what came out of the um, of the uh, Void Caller. Because even yeah. if it was Malganis, you still had even if you used all your six mana on equality consecration, you still had coin humility if Malganis came out afterwards. So. Yeah, but then the demons are buffed and uh, Malganis stays in play. And uh, if you use your you equality, used, you kill the demons first. How do you kill the demons first? Like if you go equality, what, what would you do, Lothar? Pyromancer equality cleared the board, and then the soul demon. From and the humility on the yes, Morganis comes down. And yeah, the yeah. humility on the soul demon. This way, you are not playing around uh, another wave of minions from uh, from ties, and this is very important because you have to get another security, another secure secure option right. to just be battling against the board from Zoo. Because what Zoo excels at is at building board. Right. Yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense. Like, he used the both uh, AoE removal cards and uh, got uh, left with equality, which doesn't do that much. Coins out the lay on hands, which is the, the benefit of being able to keep the coin there. Does have now have that Pyromancer for the equality that was left stranded for a little while, but still he's going to take pretty much all of that damage he healed straight back again. And uh, Tyson really, uh, really has no much not much option but to commit to the board here. So we might see him getting swept again, but now that M-Gang boss is going to be able to come out afterwards as well. Yeah, and even uh, Sixo will be able to play a preemptive Doomsayer to block another turn and just uh, get a free pass right there. Yep, so Ty's doing his best full board here, uh, playing into the Lay on Hands turn. So he's just seen a bunch of cards get drawn, but with a with a death rattle or two death rattles in play, he knows he's going to keep a decent board state afterwards if it is just a straight up equality clear. So feels relatively comfortable just pushing for the damage here, especially with that eight burst in hand from the double power overwhelming. So being six, so do you just go for Pyromaster equality? I mean, I don't really see another option. That is a ton of damage that he's staring down right now. Pyromancer equality and then Doomsayer on board. Yeah. I say. So what's left is uh, spiders? There are spiders left and the drop from the uh, from from the uh, sorry, from the um, Void, void Caller. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. From the Void Caller. It's still a lot of damage to kill the Doomsayer, but what oh. the point is you need to if, if there's no lethal from Ties, then you get some heal from the Doomsayer. Right. And I think what might end up happening here is he might use the Humility first to proc the um, Void Caller. I mean, he could do this in either direction. He could have used the Humility first to pull out the Void Caller minion and then equality afterwards. But uh, yeah. you can't play equality after Malganis drops. They, uh, the minions are not getting killed. No, but all the imps would have been swept by the Humility in the first place, though, right? Oh, yeah, right. So, You're yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so Doomsayer is being played, and Tys has 4 plus 8, 12 damage. If that would be a Doomguard, nope. that would be over. Thank no Doomguard, though. So now the Doomsayer is basically a heal for, for Xixo, because Tys is pushed to use the... Um, 1 PO and attack. 1 PO and attack to trade, or, or is he? Maybe he should just... just, just, just yeah, just I think he's space. just going to go in and get his two 1-1s one in play, try and use those as a platform for the power overwhelming on the following turns, and... Honestly, I'm totally okay with this situation, uh -huh. but that is a nice pickup for yeah. Xixo because that lets him clear the board now and play three Murlocs at the same time. Oh, he still had a way well, to clear yeah, the board with the, the weapon, weapon. but right, right, right. Yeah, definitely putting a Murloc into play right now is, is quite good. Actually, like, can he just play all the Murlocs? Yeah, maybe just play all the Murlocs here. Right, yeah, 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 just play all three Murlocs, just use the two charges to clear out the 1-1s. Gets you nicely towards that any fin win condition. You have the true silver to back this up on a following turn now, so... Yep, I like this a lot. Will you even will you actually even need the anything? Like clearing this right. board, you have so much power in with uh, even just sort of champion. Yeah. That would be so funny if he just wins without anything. And that's actually really like a really well, high level of discipline from, from Sixo there to, to clear the minions. I think he recognizes that those two cards have been stuck in Tice's hand for a long time, so he can put them on being burst damage. Uh, it would have been really easy there to not respect one ones, at least with the Murkai, and just push the damage to face. Now he can basically sacrifice the minions and then play anything can happen to basically have the same board. Yep. But the problem is still two bombs will be on the board, but they, he can kill it with the second attack from the charge menu. So basically he has a two Blickle Warriors and two um, old Mukais that will attack this turn. What is there a way of lethaling? No, no, that, that, there is no way to lethal here, I think. But uh, just stay on hands is quite good as well. You just humility Dr. Boom. You go to 20. You can even go face. Oh. 
Another blue girl. Yeah, it was lethal there if the Void Caller, did, uh, sorry, Void Walker didn't come down. 13 on board plus the four from the True Silver, but with the Void Walker in the way, that Blue Girl Warrior is a pretty awesome draw to be able to snipe down that Doctor Boom with the extra uh, old Murkai buff. And now with the extra healing in place from the Lay on Hands, Sixo feels much more confident just pushing face with these uh, with these Murlocs and just guaranteeing it the can still the be, turn. Uh, that's eight, and nine, that's 10, 15, 17. It's a chance for lethal to Wow, win. it is. <laughs> both Fios are going to the bombs. Yeah, both bombs can actually explode right. here. Yep. You, you so yeah, you you're, you're, you're abusive. You split up the power overwhelmings onto each bomb, and then you doom guard face. You hit end turn. You shut your eyes and you yes. pray. Oh man, this is <laughs> one shot. Wow. If, if Dice wins this, Sixo will get really mad. Like he is uh, or upset basically. He's gonna alt at four. Possibly. I, I mean, like we've seen Sixo super concerned about things, and right now he's already concerned and anxious. Like what is going to happen? Power overwhelming on the bomb. Wait, what is happening here? The second PO on the second bomb. Yes, there we the go. The right smile is starting to appear on Sixo's face. <laughs> this can still there happen. is 17 damage going to face here and two boom bots. Two boom bots. Two boom bots. Do you tap? Just tap. You might as well. Just find out what your next card is. Doesn't just matter. for fun of it. Like, oh the game is over. Come goodness. on. Can Dice win and the, the bomb the bomb. Oh. oh, so close, though. So close. Wow. That was really a close one. Yeah, that was an insane ending. But now the three charge Murlocs from 6 side are going to come down. I think 6 may have actually broken something if he lost that game right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was so close. That was insane. It's just that that Doomguard draw, we just, all, all three of us just immediately sat up in our chairs. Like, <laughs> Started causing damage. Yeah. What is going to happen? Crazy. Wow. And the double P on the bombs as well. So, like, you, you actually exploded both of them. That was insane. And uh, right now, Zoo is eliminated, and Sixo will just continue playing with the Murloc Paladin. Murloc Paladin! Yup. And he has uh, Secret Paladin and Druid left to deal with. Um, Druid, not the easiest matchup in the world. I know some people do feel kind of okay with Murloc Paladin in that matchup, but generally those those kind of slow pedestrian combo decks, Druid is the deck of choice to punish them. Just yeah. as such a powerful mid-range deck. I would say the same. I, I like the Druid chances in this matchup. Right. So what does Murloc Paladin have to do to win for Sir Druid? Um, Outdoor Peacekeeper is a huge card um, in the in the mid game, and also just even getting a nice curve of Murlocs early, getting like a Bluegill into War Leader. Curve into War Leader into War Leader is pretty <laughs> solid. Six O, you god. Um, True this, Silver is a good card. Yeah, true, I mean this is a pretty dreamy hand against Druid, to be perfectly honest. But uh, Aspirant and Wild Growth into Druid of the Claw is not bad from the Druid side either. So it'd be interesting to see how these these hands are going to interact. I mean, turn two. Wall leader into turn three wall leader yep. into a local wall leader. Sounds really promising. It does sound pretty good, right? Yeah. Um, but the Aspirant is going to be the first thing to take initiative on the board here, which is going to enable Tice to, to start dictating the game on his terms. And, you know, classically, Paladin, no way to interact with, uh, with a 2-3 on There's turn 2. No There's way. just no card in the deck that does it. Well, he can still play Doomsayer, possibly, but uh, I sure. feel like Darnus Aspirant... Uh, Doomsayer on turn 2 against the Druid. I like that. Yeah. Play it. Yeah, that would be okay. But then, like, there is no Doomsayer, obviously, War Leader. Uh, that cannot be answered unless... It no, no, you, you just Wild Grove, Hero Power, kill the War Leader. You like it? Yeah, you have to. You can't really let a War Leader live in this matchup, because then as every single Murloc that will come down to, um, to the board will basically do everything that Druid doesn't want to see. Right. A big minion with a lot of HP, which is not easily removed by a, 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 a snipe, sorry, a swipe, a wrath and attack of a minion. It's just really too much to handle for a druid. This creates a problem for Tice, though, because if he kills this war leader right now, which is uh, the correct play uh, on next turn, will he have enough mana to play five drop? No, he'll have four mana next. Oh, no, he will have five mana again. Yeah, he will actually he'll lose the one mana. and gain so it back fine. again when it passes back, yeah. By the way, there's a reason why like, six are calling the duck. Right. Yeah, yeah, because he just wants to curve out again, and yeah, as the opponent, you'll see that the coin doubt is, it's, sure, you can say it's just to challenge the, uh, the, challenge the Aspirant in play, but you, you suspect he has a follow-up for that, and Innovate is, uh, Dr. pretty Boom. spicy here. <laughs> but is it, uh, Dr. Boom anyway? I guess <laughs> it is. Is it Dr. Boom? Is it that a question you have to ask, Nimsh? Well, you know, there can be equality, right? 
sure. But yeah, if, if you're just getting your Dr. Boomer quality, like, yes, I know you've, you've invested in Innovate into it as well, but essentially it, it's one resource from your deck that's being a quality overall. So. I mean, Sixo can answer it actually quite easily with just uh, running two Murlocs into it and uh, still even play a 3 2. Yeah, that has to be the correct play in this situation because you know that your Murlocs are expendable. Can just play. anything can happen to him. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, I like the, the double trade, but I would like to see the Solemn Vigil follow up as opposed to playing the 3 2. Just cycle through your deck while you can. Mm -hmm. Get closer to that board clear that you're definitely going to need at some point. He now has the Equality Consecration lined up. This is also the matchup where you always charge um, the Drill to the Pearl. Well, maybe not. But I, <laughs> I just, <laughs> but I would just wanted to say that you value the damage so much, right? Yeah, And sure. there's so many board clears and the Peacekeepers. That the right. and humiliation, right? Yeah. Then that your charge minion is just so valuable. Yes. That's that's my experience in, in that's good. Did you forget to send that memo out to the G2 mailing Maybe. list? Like, hey guys, make sure you always charge through to the glory <laughs> as Paladin. <laughs> okay, got it, Lothar, thanks. Well if you charge actually it's a well like six damage if there's a true silver because yep. you kill it and uh heal for two. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind the taunt form, honestly, um, especially when you haven't seen a true silver yet and your opponent was kind of locked into doing something else with their, their turn four by the, the threat of the Doctor Boom. I don't mind the stats mode of Druid of the Claw in general. It's something that I used to do a lot more, like charging Druid of the Claw against um, slower matchups just to try and push the damage through. But honestly, you can take your time as the Druid to an extent. You have kind of the inevitability of that burst damage at the end of the game. So Definitely. I don't mind the stats mode either. So Tice is slowly building up his uh, own board, just keeping the bomb alive as well, uh, going for damage in place with his Druid. Five total. It's uh, not bad. He doesn't have the Savager yet, but uh, Force of Nature already there in hand. The Keeper is not that important in this matchup for the Doomsayers, because there's no way your opponent can stop your minions from attacking. So right. where they have board, most likely will just kill the Doomsayer. Yeah. It's not the freeze make matchup where you can't really do anything. Yeah. Yeah, once you get past like turn two, turn three, then that Doomsayer probably isn't going to go off anyway. So. Mm -hmm. so how do you like the situation for Sixo? Like, he doesn't have any draw. He still has a lot of removal in his hand, so he should be able to slow the game for a couple of turns. But who benefits? It, it seems like Tyne's benefits overall from the long game because he will have the Savage Rural Force Nature combo and can put Sixo in, uh, in check. Right. I mean, it's Sixo is a, a long way away. He's a large number of turns away from setting up his win condition. We've seen two Murlocs be used, so he still needs a couple more Actually, Murlocs. Three? three? Yeah, we oh, two more leaders. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, sorry. So three, three Murlocs have been used. So this Blue Girl Warrior is actually kind of a big deal because now with the four Murlocs in the bank, if he starts drawing into his anything, he can actually begin to set up a, a win condition of his own. So from this point forward, when when it starts to get towards turn ten, then maybe the game progressing actually benefits Sixo now because he got that fourth Murloc that lets him threaten lethal much more. Yeah, easily. I think like basically just one anything. He has double true silver. Ooh. So he Ooh. Can... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that's a good swipe. Well, that's a five damage instead of one damage to the face. And yes. that's a huge deal. Yeah, it is, yeah, it's essentially spell power plus three on this swipe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Has to be the swipe, just the face, and definitely clears the board, and I you still think, have two minutes. I think you can also validate it a, just a, an attack from the um, from the shadow the next round, is because you know your opponent has again so many options to board clear. The shade is not really a you know viable option to survive. Let's say to to ten, right? Yeah. You can combo it with with some force of nature and have a draw. So I like the attack here. Yep, I completely agree. Humility comes down on the Drake, does is able to neutralize the state of the board pretty effectively, but still a Savage Raw top deck is going to be enough to, to win the game. Doesn't get it, but still a decent amount of gas, has wild growth for the card draw and the Emperor Thorasan to keep the initiative on the board, but nothing right now to deny the card draw from that Acolyte of Pain, but card draw is not really the concern right now for Tice. He just needs to get through his deck to the damage that he needs. Yeah, definitely. Shredder is a, a weird pick because Thorisan was probably the play. Uh, do you go into Shredder and Doctor? Uh, I think it's the Shredder and Doctor Boom Killer. I was <laughs> yeah, and the, the, and the Big Game Hunter. Yeah. Because the the Emperor basically dies. You don't know what your opponent has in your hand. There's no yeah. no actually right. no um, no clue mm -hmm. to say what is he holding in his hand. So exactly. only two cards though. So Emperor. Is also, quite good if overall. so, if Sixo attacks that Emperor with his True Silver this turn, then he goes down to what eight health. 
Um, so like it's you have six damage in hand with Force of Nature already. So I think you're okay with him face tanking that right oh, now. Oh man, that heal bot was actually quite a good pickup overall because right now Sixo can uh, clear the board, draw a card, and uh, go outside of the range in the combo. And he might even consider going for face because anything can happen is 12 damage if he draws into it. Yep, very true. Anything is 12. He has that true silver lined up for eight more right now. So he's approaching lethal territory himself, but mm. still has to find a way to stave off the, the situation from his opponent here. As a Drake's a decent draw from Tice's perspective. Very decent but draw, because now we can draw, draw three minions. Mm. And there's a sub draw for well, That's so turn. important. I yeah. was just wondering whether after that final draw off the um, the Acolyte, after he got equality, he still chose to go with the Hillbot. He saw that his opponent didn't have combo the previous turn because yeah. he would have been dead then. The so choosing to heal valid. instead of the Doomsayer was actually really interesting to me because he could have potentially locked out a development turn from the Druid here. That's and a very good point, Sotil. Six time needs to get something to deal with his board because Thais will probably play Big Game Hunter as well this turn. He has enough mana and that's... that's there's no much. target for the Big Game Hunter in this deck anyway. Yeah, exactly. Well, and there's a possible Dr. Boom, but he, he, he haven't seen one and it's uh, unlikely that people play it. Like, yep. It's still a flex card. Yeah, I think the time has come now. He's going to play it out. Uh, Shredder in the middle, Twitch chat's happy, and uh, Sixo is going to have to find something spectacular here to stave off everything. And Tombsayer from Shredder. Sure, that is indeed something spectacular. I mean, he's going to go for everything else apart from that. So he's going to be at 18 health with a four attack minion on board and combo in hand. So by Quite my damage. count, that is not particularly pretty for Sixo right here. Yeah, it's not. And you have also the mana to actually Hero power as well. Yep. That is absolutely correct play because. No, or to, that. <laughs> you have to assume there is not enough damage to kill you. You have to hope. Right, but I think if you're going to assume that the damage isn't there to kill you, then you play Doomsayer on the previous turn instead of Healbot, right? Yeah, so correct. It's uh, interesting I would say overall. The same. But either way, Tice does come back against the Anything Pally with his Druid, levels the series up one game to one, and uh, it might be time for that Patron Warrior of 6-0 to come out and start doing some work here. Or Zhu, if that's his Ah, favorite. sure, yeah, Zhu's totally fine as well. Yeah, so we'll see what uh, Dex uh, 6 or is playing, but the uh, Druid is quite good, especially in the uh, hands of Tice. Like, I think both Tice and Life Coach, they're especially good in the class. So uh, that's why, well, Life Coach already in the top eight, waiting for Tice to join him, and Tice Really confident in that class as well. I'm just thinking, which deck would I choose against the Druid? Patron so? or Zoo? It's not an easy choice. I don't think either of them are like heavily favored against the Druid. S Both of them are just basically 50 50 in my Right. I, I think overall, if you want to protect one deck to go up against the Secret Paladin, you'd rather protect the Patron Warrior, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I like uh, it kind of makes sense to lead out with the Zoo here a little bit from my perspective. But well, Zoo I, versus Secret Paladin is also fine. I, yeah, it's fine, but it's not as favored as the Patron Warrior. Yeah, you're right. I don't you're think right. overall. So. The situation, keep three cards. Even though it's Druid, you're pro you probably always hard mole again for Innovates and Wild Groves. When you play against Zoo and you know you're playing against Zoo, mm -hmm. you probably keep those key cards, which is Living Roots and Shade of Next Ramus and Swipe. Yeah. Because the Swipe is so important against right. Implosion. But the Living Roots can be mulligan away when you're on the draw because it doesn't play um, well into a Void Walk. Sure. Right? Yeah, but um, yeah, going second, it's. Um much more flexible because you can use it to react to a flame imp on turn one, or if it, if it's just an say an abusive sergeant played on turn one, you can just play it as the two one ones, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's much more flexible when you can react to what your opponent plays. And here you go, you can react to the fact it's a void walker and probably just not play it at all. I'm quite kind of surprised by the fact that uh, Tyson will get away this fight. I think swipe is basically if you don't have the wild growth or or aspirant, it's uh, too late to to be played. So versus zoo, you want to have something like. You value Innervate Keeper of the Grove a bit more. Well, I value Swipe the same as I value Keeper in this matchup, and I would have kept ke Keeper. There, there can be no hand. implosion, though. Like, if there is no implosion and uh, you're just facing cards like uh, Imp Gangbos and uh, Dark Peddlers, you can just sit on Swipe and do nothing. And Zoo always tries to play around Swipe if possible. Yep, so Knife Juggler comes down, protected behind the uh, the Voidwalker for now, but that Living Roots is still in hand to deal with the Juggler, and this is this is the thing that you point out, it's just a better card going second, because you do just get to react to the situation much, much better. So now Living Roots is able to come down, 
deny the pressure from this knife juggler, but as Zu does, the pressure is going to keep on coming straight into the M Gang boss on the next turn. Yeah, absolutely. It's an interesting situation because Nice didn't get uh, the cards that are so good for Druid that innervate in Wild Grove. So overall, I think he, dis he is disadvantaged, but he will be able to coin Shredder on three and follow up with the Shredder on four, which might turn around the tables because Shredders are so good. And he has two draws to, to draw an innovate and play Dr. Boom on turn five. Yeah, just to follow up. Shredder, Shredder, Dr. Boom. Seems like a Druid curve. Might work, might work. Uh, what about Sixo, though? Like, he, this opening was quite good, even though Juggler got sniped. Um, the Ruben Egg and Abusive should work as well. If, uh, sorry, if Tides will play the Pyta Shredder, Sixo is pushed. Let's say, assume that he's not drawing a card. Sixo will be pushed to use the Abusive of Surgeon on the um, Void Walker just to trade and hope for to not uh, to not see a 4 4 minion yeah. from the Pyta Shredder, right? Uh, so the. Well, Implosion is draw is quite good there. So the egg will kind of be pointless. But yeah, in this situation, that's an okay card. Yeah, but it's fine. now the swipe. Imagine the swipe now. The yep, the swipe would have been need. absolutely so glorious dry. here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, swipe would have been absolutely glorious there. But now all of a sudden with those 1-1s one -ones on the board, this second shredder is going to be met with its doom if it comes down here. Because that abusive sergeant is now so much better than it was on the previous turn. This is why I always keep the swipe. <laughs> well, it would work here because Sixo actually didn't play around it. Um, well, people will not play around swipe uh, when you're going first. Because you set up so much board presence right. that your, your opponent is most likely to have to swipe after uh, you know, a um, few turns. And you can hold on, when you, especially when you have a hand like that. Like, you know, Leo Jenkins, it's a finisher. Yeah. You can't really bank on this card just sitting there awkwardly. That was also a clear information to Sixo from Thais that he doesn't have a swipe. Yeah. Ooh, that one I cheat. Yep. Entire Shredder just died to half of an implosion. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's disgusting. That's good value for Sixo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he still has 10 damage burst in his hand. That's not a swipe again. So oh, this do, doesn't boys? look good. No keepers. Yeah, no just gonna. He had an option to just play the Shade and maybe Wrath something that turn, but he's just going to dig through his deck with the Drakes. He knows that the one card he needs to get to is Swipe, which, yes, we know, Lothar, he mulliganed away. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine, we know. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pio now is uh, quite all right as well. You obviously might uh, keep it in mind as a da damage dealer. How much damage is there over? Four plus three, seven, 17. So I think using Pio on, a, on an egg is quite OK. Yeah, he can push 9 damage this turn and then hold 10 in hand for the following turn. So it's definitely a consideration, but that does involve leaving up an Azure Drake on the board, which even though you know your opponent doesn't ha didn't have swipe previously, there's still a couple of cards that have been drawn. You know, the natural card, the draw from the, the Azure Drake. So this makes a lot of sense. And he is still ensuring his board against swipe as best as he can by Absolutely. buffing up the extra one, one, uh, one health tokens up to two. That's a good card, but unfortunately, that's lethal next turn, right? It seems like it's over, actually. It is indeed. 2, 4, 5, Six, eight, 7, 11, 11 on 17, board and 10 21. in hand, so yeah. Yeah, and with the Wrath, he can deal no 3 damage to remove 2 damage from board, so Sylvanas is probably the best chance for Thais to come back, but uh, we know that there is enough. Jenkins. Yeah, Sixo wins uh, with the Zoo versus Drew. It's a pretty one-sided game, and I have to wonder, like, what would happen if he actually kept the swipe that Lothar was suggesting in the open hand? <laughs> really? Did anyone mention that? Because I didn't. I didn't hear anyone talking about swipe during that game. First time I heard it. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but I'm just. I think that's. I haven't watched every game. I've been, you know, on, when I've been grabbing food and stuff while I've been on breaks. But I think that's the first time I've actually seen. Leroy used for lethal in the Chinese Zoo deck, the Sea Giant Zoo. Every time I've seen Leroy being used by someone who's brought that version, it's been to trade when they were behind. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a good card to trade. It's a good card to finish the game, so... Sure. We haven't seen Sea Giants from Sixo, though. I'm pretty sure that. It might be the version just with the Soul Fires and... You know, All right, yeah, yeah, that's possible as well. I, I'd suspect it's the Sea Giant version, though. We know Sixo has a propensity for Sea Giants in Zoo for a very, very long time. Yeah, so that's true. I'd, I'd expect them to be in there. So now we have kind of the uh, the classic, you know, aggressive mid-range paladin 
Zhu powerhouse decks coming up against each other and Avenge <laughs> Minibot Mustafa Battle on the play is uh, ridiculous. Solid, ridiculous. let's say. Let's put it that way. It's a good hand. Is there a world where you mulligan Avenge away? No. Or is it just it's too good with Master for Battle because it will always proc? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. You, you know what's good against that start? Sea Giant. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It's fine, you flood your board with as many 1-1s one as you want. I have an 8-8 for about four mana. Double master to buff the Sea Giants. Wow, <laughs> this game could get very messy very quickly. Yeah, there is turn to, well, actually, do you go to Juggler? Yeah, probably you, you can not You can't play the Juggler into yeah. a turn one sequence. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. You have no follow-up play. It's potentially Noble Sacrifice. It's just a whole world of bad things that can happen. If, if Gang Boss on turn two is much better, especially because on turn three you can follow up the Juggler and maybe get the Juggle there. Right. If you coin out Imp Gang Boss and your opponent starts responding with Master for Battles, suddenly you're just in Sea Giant Heaven. Like, it's... it's, <laughs> it's it, the potential for this game to get ridiculous very quickly is uh, is very real right now. I'm Wait, Solo, are you telling me there is no response in Paladin deck against the Sea Giant? Not in this Paladin deck, there isn't, no. <laughs> Suddenly, Outdoor Peacekeeper, once considered one of the best three drops in the game, just isn't good enough to go in a Paladin deck. That's how disgusting the cards that are in this deck are. Free damage to the face. I don't yep. see a point in attacking that. Unless... No, no, it doesn't. You want to have a chance to land the Avenge on the 2-2 right. with the Divine Shield already. Absolutely, yeah. Because there's, apart from the, the silence from the zoo, there's no way to kind of play around it, right? So there's no reason to give your opponent um, an opportunity to have more minions that are able to attack to, um, your minions on next turn. Yeah, also enable Sijan. <laughs> well, Sijan will not be played next turn, right? Because we can have one more minion on board, yep. which means the giant will be for four and only three mana. Yeah, he can get unless. That. Ooh. Unless uh, he actually. Oh, yeah, I mean, if the shield, if the shield is going in, then the weapon is going to go to clear out the token here, yeah. so it's still not going to work out. Okay, well okay. So, um, but yeah, six zero will, will want to get the sea giant down as quickly as possible, and we see right now there is no keeper of Alderman in Tice's hand, which is the only thing that is able to deal with it. So. Uh, Sixo is going to play out his knife juggler here, and the flame imp is going to come down here. Probably end up proccing the avenge. No, nope. not okay. really. Okay. Not today. That's an avenge proc, though. That is an avenge proc, and I guess there is a, an element of um, bluffing the noble sacrifice by hitting that imp gang boss down to two health that turn, which really creates some confusion in Sixo's mind. So. Uh, really strong line from Tice there to just create that weird situation in Sixo's head of how to play around the secrets. And although, you know, having even though he played into the Avenge there and activated it, he does still have a pretty solid board on his own side. Absolutely, I think uh, Sixo is in a great position next turn. Possibly even Iron Bigal and Sea Giant if there is enough minions. If if we see Master for Battle this turn, and I think we will see actually Master for Battle. Probably it's better to just play Hunted Creeper into Hero Power. Because you have to kill the Night Juggler with your 5-4. It's not an easy option. Uh, it's not an easy well, stage to deal you with. Do, you, do, uh, you did kill the Knife Juggler, so you know Knife Juggler is not available for 6 anymore. Maybe he will have a second in hand, but he cannot play against the second one. So Master for Battle is actually a lot of power with the Secret Keeper. But the Secret Keeper will be dealt with with the 2-1. So, and there are a lot of chances of drawing a secret next turn. Probably you don't want to play the loaded one to fight if you have an option to play more minions with the secret as well. Yeah, true. And you probably would just want to hero power because you want to have cards at least, right? Like if you go for hero power. Ooh. Oh, he's going for master! But uh, there definitely hero power was a consideration there. All right, so we are down to a three mana Sea Giant. So there's some cards that can be drawn here that can be played for free. And Dark Peddler is very much one of them. That is a pretty awesome draw for 6 0 right there. Soul Fire takes the Lowly Squire. That again is free as a one drop to play with the Sea Giant, and there we go. That's Boom. some value one there. One mana, eight eight. Yeah, that cannot be answered really because we just discussed it. Unless Spice is playing Aldor Peacekeeper in this Secret Paladin, which we haven't seen. Right. Or Keeper of Alderman is the uh, the other potential thing to deal with it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But no such joy for Tice right now. He's just going to have to slam his Lotheb, try and get a competitive minion on the board. But with that Defender of Argus back up from 6-0, he can now take the initiative and just start being incredibly aggressive as the Zoo deck with the 8-8 in play. 
amazing situation. Like, what do you even kill with the one ones? Uh, Lovely Squire. I don't think you kill anything. Wait, really? I think Lovely Squire is, has to die. You want to just go face with the one ones? How do you want? How do you want to win? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> well, on the back of Mr. Challenger, that's going to be drawn next turn. Sure. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Defender of Argus just looks pretty fantastic here. Um, Gormok not quite getting the job done. No usage for IMB Cow. If he taps, there's a chance he whiffs this turn entirely. So Defender of Argus by process of elimination just seems to be the only play available. And now you have a giant taunt. You did not see a Keeper of Older Man, but still the respect from 6-0 for the destructive power of Keeper. It I like it the Keeper, I, I think it's more about the challenger. You don't yeah, want yeah, to, yeah. to give sure. the synergy with the secrets and multiple creatures. Clear sure. the, clear yeah, the board, sense. basically, and position yourself. Uh, like, even if there is a Keeper, right? You're still in a good position. You have the right. board and 3-4. Suddenly, it's not that great. And there's, I guess there's other beats as well that you can take by having a minion in play. You know, suddenly Blessing of Kings gets better, Coghammer gets better, etc. Also, so. the Gormok is live next turn. Yeah, that's very true as well. Yeah, I like the trade the more I think about it. But so tempting when you have that kind of position as a zoo player to just say, I mean, I'm the one with the 8 in play, dude. So you have to respect me. I'm going to be the one pushing face. But yeah, I think you guys are right. All things considered, the trade is pretty disciplined there. Like, honestly, with the Haunted Creeper draw, I don't see dice coming back from the situation. If next turn we'll just see Iron Miguel into Gormok and so much damage to face. Right. He can, he can just ignore the spiders. He certainly can. He does get a free trade into one of them from what we can see, but 6 will be concerned about what exactly that secret is and what the implications of it are. So, yeah, he might just end up slamming everything into the face. Which is not bad. He can check for the uh, Noble he... Sacrifice with the Defender Vargas first. Yeah. Now he doesn't even have to silence. He can just play the Haunted Creeper and the Gormok, yeah. and he can hold on to the Owl for a potential Avenge buff later, to Owl a Coghammer, to Owl Tyrion if the game somehow gets that far. If you um, want to be super safe, can you play around that Consecration? It probably doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, I really don't think it matters a great deal. I think this this, this is the turn now, one turn later than I predicted, but it's time to get the party started and jam damage into that yellow guy right there. So last draw for Tice. Last draw, and uh, if it whiffs, he's eliminated from the tournament, but there's basically no card that can save him here. Even Consecration would not be enough. Yep, and that is a pretty big whiff. He has the damage with the competitive spirit to take out the seat, but that is not enough. And 6 0 is going to go through and take our final spot in the top eight, Nimsh. Wow. So we have our final top eight. Can we go through who is there? Lothar, do you remember? Uh, well, we have Life Coach, and we have 6 0, we have Ness, and yes. we have Pokrovach, we have um, Powder, Powder, Powder Zelay, and. Missing some. There is a player from Flow. Oh, Camelan. Camelan, right. Yes. So a pretty good top eight, and it's interesting that uh, today we had three players from G2, one of them advancing, and three players from Flow, one of them advancing as well. Yep. But overall, a pretty stacked top eight. A lot of great players. Uh, let's say we have two players that are not that known, uh, Camelan and Ness, even though we actually well, know them, because uh, Kamlan is a German streamer, and uh, Ness, obviously, the local champion. Right, I think overall the bracket just has a ton of variety, right? I talked about the start of the day, the big stories were the, the UK domination of the Swiss and the, the domination of G2 in general, sending all three players through. We still have one of those UK players, one of the G2 survivors, and then we have a great balance of just, you know, different countries, different representation, different regions, and, you know, different ages and backgrounds from all over yeah. the place. So it's just a really, really exciting top so eight overall. Let's talk about this bracket overall right now. We have Powder versus Sixo coming up first uh, tomorrow. Then we have Zale versus Dog, Life Coach versus Ness, and Kamlan versus Pokrovac. Sorry, just EU rigged bracket. So we put the two NA guys <laughs> together just so that they can't get, like, wow, yeah. two NA guys made it into an EU top eight. Put them together so they don't get any further down. We have three players from Germany. <laughs> Three players from Germany, that's very true. Kamlan, Life Coach, and Sixo all making it through. So uh, Germany standing up right now as well, a force a in Hearthstone Esports. There's a lot of players from Germany in all esports in general. Right. It seems like German players are get generally competitive. Yeah, I think from what I hear as well, the uh, particularly like local scenes in, in Germany are quite thriving in terms of Hearthstone. Like the Meltdown Bar in, in, in Berlin yeah. is where a lot of huge players have got their start and come from. So that's true. No surprise.